All right, greetings everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about Basket Case 2. This time, he's not alone. Yes, they, like I said uh, last week when I talked about the first movie, I am just watched the second one, and I, right after it ended, I think I liked it more. I definitely liked the ending more than the first one. It definitely gets me to want to watch the, sec the third one, I mean. And first off, yeah, Belial looks a lot different. He has, like, it's like a head on top of a bunch of just, like, random, like a giant pile of flesh, basically. He can stick to walls, and he actually laughs out loud. He doesn't talk, he still just growls, but he can actually laugh like a normal person, basically. I uh, laughs at Dwayne when Dwayne's talking about having a normal life with this one girl. Uh, so better get about talking to the movie. So, at the end of the first movie, which came out in 1982, it seemed like D Belial and Dwayne died after fighting and falling off that sign in that hotel. And uh, no, they actually survived. So this movie came out eight years later in 1990. They got the same actor. You need to return for like one line from uh, that girl who played Casey in the first movie. And anyway, we wake up in the hospital and only one time in this movie does Belial's eyes glow red and I guess it's to wake up his brother or control his brother a little bit. It's kind of, again, it's not explained, but it, he his uh, he kind of wakes up first his eyes glow red and wakes up Dwayne, he breaks out of his uh he's chained to a hospital bed and there's a huge media circus because wow, what is Belial, right? And yeah, eight years later, but this is supposed to take place right after, like, the exact same night as the first movie. And they escape together. Uh, Belial kills this random officer. And the two men just sneak out with funny coincidences of everyone just missing them because something else is happening. And they just walk by without even really trying to be uh, sneaky. But anyway, first off... Yeah, this movie had a much higher budget, so kind of the down-to-earth griminess of things isn't here as much as the first movie, which definitely, for, you know, for me is a negative. There's not a lot of cutaway random moments where you get to see people just live their nor normal day lives in this crazy New York City <laughs> in, the, in the 80s, because this film, this must have been filmed in 1989, came out in 1990. So that is a big negative. Uh, most of the movie actually takes place at this one kind of big house, mansion, and Staten Island, where, uh, there's this doctor called Granny Ruth, but everyone knows of her as Dr. Freak because she had a baby with 11 arms who died, and then she just decided to take care of, uh, a lot of crazily deformed people to just have them accepted at this place, as you can see on the back of this picture, and she gets Belial and Dwayne to, to get, to get, there yeah, to go there to escape the, uh, police, and there's a reporter, uh, one of the reporter's friends, and this other guy's like a photographer. They're basically after Belial, and that's kind of the whole plot. Is fight is getting these reporter these three people off their back, and even though there's multiple creature other freaks in the movie, Belial is still the only person to kill anyone. There's actually six murders in there's six deaths or six kill count in this movie, just like the first one. Belial looks a lot different. I would not be surprised if they had just a normal person put on some makeup and just be Belial's head. So, I don't even think I like it as much as the first one. But, that's what he looks like. And the other freaks, most of them is just like their heads are messed up. Sometimes you, their hands are too. Uh, I don't really do much. They don't kill anyone. The only two or three or four I remember is... Uh, this the one guy who you see in the picture standing above this one kind of elf deformed looking guy. He's like super shy and quiet, and he's always scared. Uh, there's this other one with a moon head. I remember for his head, this guy with giant teeth. This guy with a you know giant brain on his head kind of reminds me of something from uh, Garbage Pal Kids. Uh, there's another one who who uh, I guess has a bunch of lumps on his head. But he actually talks normally. He tells Dwayne where, that uh, Belial is in the attic after kind of surprising him by being quiet. And then just being on his stomach, just sliding up to Dwayne while he's trying to fully enter into the attic. I'm probably not describing it as well as I could be. There's also this one who's just like a giant head in a basket. But he can he's like a he can sing opera music. There's also one who's like a frog 
giant frog head. There's also one guy who looks mostly normal except a bunch of like long black things are hanging off of his head. Oh look at this picture, so in the very bottom if you see there's this one with like eyes that are on the sides of her head, they're stretched out. It almost looks like uh, something from Star Wars, I forget what that creature is called, but I don't even remember her in the movie. Also, Granny Ruth has a granddaughter who looks basically normal, but she keeps saying that that uh, she isn't. And there's this hidden character, but it's pretty obvious that there's this one girl who's there like a month, I think. And she's all covered up, but uh, she's basically Belial, but a girl. And yeah, they get together in the movie. So I'm really bad at mystery, so I thought that the at first, before I put two and two together... And yeah, in this picture you can see the Blu-ray.com thing, so I'll switch it to another one. To the poster. So, the girl, she says, oh, I'm not normal. You know, it's not what you think, Dwayne. Because Dwayne is basically normal except the scar he has. So, and this was before Eve was revealed to be, uh, like, uh, Belial. So I thought e the female, oh, Eve is the, fe is the name of the uh, female Belial. And I uh, forget the granddaughter's name, but basically the grand I thought the granddaughter was uh, going to be the half of, uh, how do I say it? that Eve got cut off of the granddaughter, just like how Dwayne, or sorry, just how Belial got cut off of Dwayne. But no, it's completely different. We don't know anything about where Eve came from, and they do have a timeline, because she says that she's been with Granny Ruth for years. And at the end of the movie, she dies because when uh, Belial and Eve are doing the deed, uh, Dwayne and her, oh gosh, let me look up her name, Susan, that's the granddaughter's name, so, what are doing it, Susan, like, a giant, like, uh, almost like the, the Thing movie where that creature comes out of the guy's stomach, basically looks like that, comes out of her stomach, and she says that's been in there for six, this creature appeared six years ago, has not given birth to it yet, and is waiting to give birth to it, that's why she's at Granny Ruth's place, Dr. Freak's place. Wow, get, I can't believe that popped up on my screen during this review. Anyway, so Dwayne for some reason has a mental breakdown then. This is the worst part of the movie, but like I said, it leads to the best ending of, uh, com or better than the first part. The first movie's ending. He freaks out, and he accidentally pushes her out a window, and she dies. And, uh, it's almost like a reverse, because in the first movie, Belial couldn't uh, ruined Dwayne's love life, so Dwayne ruins Belial's love life, and he takes him, and with like a giant sewing needle, literally stabs through him and Belial over and over again to thread each other, stitch them back together as you can see in this picture, and yeah, that's how the movie, and that's the final shot of the movie. I have no idea what happens next, but uh, wow. There's a lot of other random, uh, not exactly random, but... Fun scenes, they get less and less as it goes on because, for example, there's this one big, not really a big scene, but they're in the mail room, or sorry, a newsroom, and this guy, basically the main reporter's boss, wants to get a story on where Dwayne and Belial have run away to, and he offers like a million dollar reward, and the reporter asks if she'll get it, if she gets them, and he's like, what reward, what money, <laughs> and uh, so she calls this one guy, and this is kind of the most memorable scene in the movie for me, is she calls this one of her friends to help, and he contacts Belial and, or sorry, Dwayne, and forces him to come to this bar, the talk that's by uh, their, the freak house. And he threatens Dwayne with the cops if he doesn't. So he shows up, but so does all the other freaks, and they're just in the bar wearing these horrible masks. And I actually spotted at least one person who walked to the, to the uh, bar table behind them who was wearing a fake mask, so that was a cool kind of hint about what would end the scene. So he kind of stands up and he asks, you know, uh, he asks people, hey, who's the freaks? And all the other freaks are like, well, it's you. And the reporter will look normal, so do you all just stand there kind of kind of push, put, get this guy to stumble back into the storage room and he gets killed by Belial in there? The kills definitely take a lot longer to see and you see a lot more of it, but again, it's just Belial like scratching at them. So, still not not really that, enter you know, I mean, it's entertaining in the moment, but not that much to think back on. The best kill was definitely when uh, this 
her photo her photographer buddy sneaks into the house and goes up into the attic with his camera and takes a picture and he sees like all the freaks just in the back of the the attic because the attic is like a basically another floor because the roof is so big or tall and he keeps taking these pictures as they keep walking towards him he turns to the there's Belial just jumping towards him pulls him fully up into the attic and kills him and you just see flashes of the camera go off bright lights over and over again it's a really really well done moment it's awesome some people say uh, Dwayne and Bilal take a backseat to the freaks. I really don't think that at all. Cause, like I said, uh, oh, maybe I didn't say this yet, because none of the freaks talk. It's just uh, Granny Ruth and uh, Susan there. Oh, there's this other scene where uh, Granny Ruth or Dr. Freak takes Bilal to this fake uh, f circus of freaks. It's just gonna, he basically just has fake statues of uh, these, you know, basically the former that he says, like, oh, hey, I have a. Uh, Dwayne, or so I have the demon Belial here, but just like a bunch of like dog, like animal bones or whatever. A mermaid is just like a statue, and she gets mad, or Granny gets mad and has Belial attack the guy. There's also, I mean, there's some funny moments, maybe not, maybe intentionally funny. Like one where uh, Granny Ruth, there's this one moment they're doing a therapy session. There's only one therapy session you see, and it's like one minute long between Dr. Freaking Belial and she's like maybe ripping off other people's faces is not in your best interest and uh, speaking of that with uh, Dwayne like I said about looking at back at the first movie maybe the whole thing about like judging people on appearances how well Dwayne was a murderer just as much as Belial and it's kind of uh a lot more obvious here because he says some jokes basically while these people are about to be uh, destroyed by Belial, like at the end of the reporter, he like opens up the wicker basket to to uh, have Belial jump out and attack her. But it was a joke because Belial wasn't in the basket, and all the other freaks come into her her her, her apartment, break into her apartment, and Belial is in another wicker basket that's basically like a trash can, I guess. And she dumbly goes to it. He jumps out and kills her in the way where he twists her head up like. She put her head in a real life pencil sharpener, and yeah. After that, they all, they all, all, everyone there celebrates back at the house with a picnic, and then of course, then things go off the deep end with Susan dying, and then Belial or Dwayne snapping and uh, slowing Belial onto himself. Actually, I think I like this movie more, and not just because of the high budget, but they had a little bit of everything in this movie so far, and. There was stuff that from the first movie that I liked here with the random people. That was only at the very start of the movie, but it was there. Some more serious things talked about when it comes to, uh, oh, not really that serious, but basically Dwayne now can be fully free of Belial. He's going, to, you know, without any guilt. So he plans on leaving and maybe taking Susan with him to leave the place. But of course that all doesn't, doesn't go well. It kind of is, again, like uh, the first movie about differences, because it's like, well, you could be a freak to another group of people, despite you thinking that they're the freaks or, or whatnot. I don't know if that makes sense, again, the way I'm saying it. Kind of like it's talking about not how people judge freaks, but how people classify freaks. Maybe the third movie will talk about something else when it comes to uh, biases and people who look different. Which, speaking of the third movie, I've never seen before, but I know Belial and Eve have kids. Like, the, she's like the original Octomom. They, like, come out like uh, a giant sausage link, like like a kid, umbilical cord, kid, umbilical cord, etc. And there's a lot of CGI in that movie, if I remember what it looks like. But everything else, I don't know anything. So, again, it's going into the movie anew next, time, next week when I review the third movie. Even though I like this more than the first movie, or think it's better than the first movie, well, maybe I don't think it's better, because, yeah, this is not a must-watch. The first movie, maybe if you're in the horror, it's definitely, you know, you or in the movies, you should see it once. This one, definitely not that important. I really hope Basket Case 3 isn't, like, part 2 of this movie. Oh, gosh. And not in that it doesn't continue a story, but that there's all these other creatures that take up a quarter of the screen 
Also, what did they do to the body of the reporter after they killed him? I have no idea. I don't think it's ever explained. Is he just dead body rotting in the attic? Also, some they're not the the freaks. They're not just like people who look weird. They're you like some of them need an oxygen tank to breathe. Some of them have to eat specifically. Like oh yeah, there's this oh, at the opening of the end celebration picnic. The guy with the giant teeth, he like eats corn, but obviously he's eating with like his normal mouth. I kind of wish he used his giant fake teeth to like kind of cut the the corn bits off the corn cob. If if you know what I mean. But I actually like how none of the other uh, freaks except Bilal was, was violent. But then kind of begs the question, how the heck are they getting so much food? Like, what do they do? Because they obviously don't have jobs because they're unknown to, to the world, really. Actually, another thing I just thought of, it's kind of weird that... Uh, so this movie takes place right after the first movie, and of course... That actor who plays Dwayne is eight years older. That didn't really that didn't bother me, but when he takes off his shirt and you see his scar, I think you only see his scar in one scene. It's like almost completely healed, and yet in the first movie, which is supposed to take place just like one or two days ago, or maybe a week ago when it comes to the actual timeline of the events, his scar is like totally black and huge and you could still see everything but now all of a sudden it's basically almost healed in like one week that was really weird i guess the budget didn't need to, to rely on cgi or effects also i've accidentally said that only one of the freaks other freaks in the movie could talk but no there was at least two who, who, who talked like a normal person the one girl who, who uh Granny Rusa was like a second daughter who had like a giant like vegetable head or something. She could also talk to that other guy I, I described. I guess my, my end thought is this was less fun, more serious, and for a B-movie with a crazy premise, that's kind of at its detriment for uh, comparing it to the first movie, which I liked more. Well, no, like I said, I like this movie more, but what, what I think is better or worse. This movie is... Not as good as the first movie, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, Belial looks a... I mean, like, Belial, I don't like this new look. Yeah, it's more realistic looking, but... Still. I guess all of the flesh he's on top of, his head is on top of, help him stick to walls, and that's why. His more human eyes really ruin it for me. And no stop motion for him as well. He's like an animatronic or, or puppet, so... If you like that more... Which I know that is better, I guess. There you go. And yeah, this is not a comedy horror movie. It's called a comedy thriller horror movie. <laughs> I'm glad there's no tagline to this movie. It's just called Basket Case 2. I think the third one has a tagline. Unless there's a fourth movie that I don't know about. And there's a tagline on that one. I swear, I just saw one with a tagline. Okay, with that said, thank you for watching my talk about Basket Case 2. And I hope you enjoyed.